So, is this our bedroom too? Your bedroom, just yours. When he said Kohli interrupted her speaking, it hurt her. But she tried to gather some words for him. But we yeah, are married. We are supposed to sleep in one bedroom. I am going to my bedroom. He again interrupted him and turned him back, leaving with an irritated expression. Her eyes got wet when he disappeared from her side. She sat on the bed and looked at her waiting ring with a dead desire. This day hates me that much. He is not even listening to me and only says what he prefers. Does my husband hate me so much that he even created a distance? Just so we sleep in separate rooms now? But why? Maybe I am not beautiful enough for him. Maybe he already has someone else in his life. Maybe I am ugly and that's why he always keeps his distance. Why should I prepare for these reasons? What else can I think of and pick that as the reason? I can't even ask him because he never listened to me. Jay and Vaughn had an arranged marriage just one week ago and it was forced on Jay. Vaughn liked him when she received the marriage proposal from Jay's parents who asked her to marry him. Vaughn built many hopes on him and agreed to marry him. After the marriage, all her hopes were broken on the first night when he just slept on the sofa and told her to sleep on the bed. Whenever she tried to talk to him, he never gave her a turn. They had been like this for one week, even in Jay's parents' home. And just today, Jay moved to his own home and they both have to live here. Here he doesn't need to sleep in the same room with her. He can sleep in his room while she sleeps in the guest room. After freshening up, Vaughn went to downstairs to find the kitchen so she could make breakfast for both of them early in the morning because Jay leaves for the office early before 9 a.m. Who are you? I'm the maid here and I have been working here for two years, ma'am. Oh, okay. Where is the kitchen? I need to make breakfast before Jay wakes up. Ma'am, I already made breakfast and Tessa has already left for the office after having it. Vine's face pale which made it noticed clearly. Ma'am, are you okay? I thought I should make breakfast for him. It's okay. At least I'll make lunch for him then. Sorry ma'am, but Sir told me never let you cook for him. He ordered me to be the only one to cook here. What? Why did he say that? I don't know either, ma'am. Come to the dining area. I'll serve breakfast to you. Vaughn didn't say anything, just nodded with a sad part. Meanwhile, in the office, the meeting had ended and Jay sighed as his friend came to him. Soon, I'll arrange another meeting with the investor if possible. No, it's okay. What the investor said he says so far. I'm also thinking agreeing to it. Isn't it that bad? Okay then, as you say. Hmm. What happened to the London business group? Why did you cancel it? Do you work hard? Can you try to realize? You are now a married man, not a bachelor. Uh-huh. You just got married recently. You should have fun with your wife. And make her always feel grateful. But why did you shift back from your parents' home to your home early? And what will your wife feel here if you leave on your business trip, leaving her alone this early? So you are saying I should stop working and always roam on her like a useless man? I am saying it's the beginning of marriage. So give some time to your wife. Do less for five days. And after this, you can go back for usual duty. By then, she will get used to it and won't feel alone, even when you leave for trips. Jay got frustrated and punched his fist on the desk, as if Jungkook had said something illegal. But then he realized what he had done and sighed and struck his shoulders. My bad. 
But Jungkook, I won't change my mindset for anyone. I'll be how I have always been. I won't act or do something I have never done. If anyone has any issue with me, it's their problem, not mine. He left the meeting room with his sweet face, leaving Jungkook in complete silence. Man, is he really alert with his wife? Why did he get angry when he was talking about her? Does he not like her or what? No, maybe he just doesn't say about his wife. He muttered to himself and then left from there. Time skipped to night and Wan was waiting for Tae at home. It was now 10.30 p.m. and she was still waiting for him, not going to sleep. While she was waiting, she heard the door open from outside and saw Tae entering, losing his nectar. His face showed frustration. He looked at her, noticing she was still awake and followed his pose as he was about to pass. She called out to him, Tae, I want to talk to you. Not now. It's okay if you don't talk to me properly, but at least listen to me about what I want to say. He stopped and pulled the tongue down and turned to ask her looking at you. What's going on in your mind? I want to continue my job. Can I continue? She asked nervously as if it was a crime, but his full out face remained the same as before. What he said next left her surprised. Absolutely, you can do whatever you want. You don't need my permission for that. She said calmly and left for his room. But she dropped her jaw in surprise. Just then the maid came to her and called out. What happened, ma'am? Is he for real? How could he agree to so easily? I thought he would say no or argue with me about this. I thought at least we could talk about it for a while. But he just simply allowed me. Oh, you are surprised by his response then? Yes, yes. Of course. Why would he stop you? He is not that good and good of a person. As far as I know, he is a gentleman who gives importance to others and is kind too. Saying that, the maid left. But Vyan's face turned dull. So, does that mean he is good with everyone and cares for them, but not with me? Does that mean he ignores me and doesn't care about me? And that's why he didn't even take a second to think, just said, do whatever you want. She sighed in sadness and went to her bedroom glancing at his room upstairs. Days passed and there were no fights or arguments. But the distance started growing between them. He was busy with his work and she was also busy with hers. One day when she came home after work, she was stunned to see Tay already at home scrolling on his phone. She wanted to call him and ask how his day was, wanting to talk to him as she really needed it. But she hesitated, thinking he would show look at angry or ignore her. As she was about to leave for the her bedroom, she stopped when she heard his voice. Yahoo! She turned back and saw him coming towards her. She didn't know why. But she smiled seeing him appear, and he was talking to her. Are you free tomorrow? Uh, me? Who are you asking to? Of course, I am always free for you, no matter what. Is he trying to ask me out on it yet? Yeah, but why? Tomorrow I have a party with my business partners, and there will be a lot of cash, rich people, investors, clients, friends. Many of them with their life partners. I was thinking of taking you with me. Will you come if I ask? I will. Her blush faded. Okay, get ready tomorrow. He tucked his hands in pants pockets and walked to his room. She parked sadly staring at his back and whispered to herself. I thought it was a date and that's why I even have important work tomorrow. I wanted to cancel it. But it's okay. At least he wants to take me to the party with him.
Jay was talking with his friends and Van was standing beside him awkwardly, listening to the conversation. Jay noticed she seemed awkward, wasn't at ease, so he whispered to him. It's okay, you can go and have some drinks. There's a variety of food here too. Hmm, okay. She talked to her hastiness and left. Jay glanced at her back once before turning back to continue talking with his friends. Vine was sipping on a soft drink when she noticed a handsome girl staring at her. He was wearing an expensive suit, his hair pushed back, a smirk on his face as he saw that she had noticed him. She quickly looked away and trying to ignore him and continued sipping her drink. But then he walked over to her holding a drink in his hand and called her. Hi, this is Jack, your husband's business partner. Did you forget me? When she heard him mention he was her husband's business partner, she looked at him with a confused expression. She took a moment to properly look at him and then realized. Yes, he really was Jay's business partner. They had once introduced him to her when they came to a party. Oh, I couldn't recognize you. What are you drinking? A soft drink? Yes. Oh, come on. Get me the time to go. There is a plenty of alcohol here and so many flavors too. Sorry, I don't drink alcohol. Alright, why are you alone? Is your husband busy with others? Or do you want some company here? At first she didn't mind him, but when she noticed him staring at her dress, it made her uncomfortable. She instinctively adjusted her dress. Excuse me, I need to go to my husband. She was about to leave, but he grabbed her wrist, causing her two eyes wide in shock. How could he touch someone else's wife? Hey, let go of my hand. She couldn't take any action or raise her eyes, as she didn't want to make a scene and have all the eyes on him. That would only make her feel more awkward and cause her even more trouble. So, your husband won't mind that, even if he probably knows. After all, I know he hates you all over. No, he likes me. He went to me here asking for my permission too. Hey, there is a rule that we all decided on that anyone who is married should bring their wives to the party. And that's why he took you here. Whenever I talk about you with him, he always avoids it. And that's enough for me to see how much he hates it. Wang couldn't speak to him as she listened to them. She was lost in the moment, like it all. She smirked at her and moved closer while she didn't even notice what he was about to do. Her mind was roaming with his words making her heart blush, and she felt like she was breaking inside. She came to her sense when Jack touched her waist, but before she could react, a tight slap hit Jack's right cheek, and one couldn't believe it because Jay was the one who slapped her. She pulled one by her hand until she bumped into him, and then he wrapped his arm on her from behind, gripping her shoulder while wearing it Jack. She could see Jay's eyes spun with fire as he stared at Jack and how tightly he gripped her shoulder, as if he were protecting her. Did you forget I'm your business partner? Jay slapped him again leaving Jack speechless with his strong palm print as mark of the star. You're just a business partner. But she is my life partner, my wife, my woman. Day to touch her again and I'll bury her alive. Apologize to my wife right now. Wine's heart skipped hearing him claim her as his wife. Am I? I'm your business partner. Our partnership is wrong. Now apologize to her and shut your mouth. Me? Sorry? Never. Okay then, let me call your wife here too. She was busy with her friends. Hey, no, no. Don't call her. I said, I said. I'm sorry, one. Once Miss Brighton that way, Jack was apologizing. But Day was still one here. Let's go, one. He grabbed her hand and taking her with him, still gripping her shoulder and pressing her closer to him. They both entered the home in silence 
and just as Wan was about to go to her room, Day spoke, making her stop. I'm sorry. For what? If I hadn't taken you, you wouldn't have been by him. It's okay. It's not your fault either. She said, looking away, and then left for her room. But Day couldn't move from there, where he stood, watching her until she disappeared. He kicked the air in frustration, making a name in the ticket hissing under his breath. It's been two hours since Wan was trying to sleep, but she was feeling a sense of discomfort and anxiety. She could feel Jack's touch, and she shook her head. She sat on the bed from a lying position, hugging her knees nervously. Wan, don't think about him. Just take deep breaths and inhale and exhale. Stay calm and think of something else that can calm your heart. She was whispering to herself, taking deep breaths. And when they came to her mind, a sigh of relief came to her face. I can still feel it. How they said that I am his life partner, his wife, his woman. I never thought he would stand by me. What is he doing in his room? Can he at least come to me now? I feel like I just want him to hold me, say something that will help me to sleep. She heard a knock on the door and thought it was the maid. The door isn't locked. You can come in. The door opened slowly, and when they entered, she swallowed. Why is he coming into her room at this time? He hardly met her eyes with his. Why haven't you slept yet? I don't feel well. My mind is messed up because of Jack. By the way, why did you come? When she asked, he gulped and came to her slowly, silent. If you don't mind, I can sit here beside you. She was stunned but nodded confused. He sat beside her and she gently unwrapped her arms from her arms to her knees and sat freely, looking at him while he avoided looking at her face. I just sense that you weren't feeling well and might need someone beside you right now, so I decided to come to you. How did you sense it exactly? He didn't answer, but finally his gaze met hers in silence. Her heart began to race as he took her hand in his. She swallowed, unsure of his intentions, but he gently cupped her palm with his other hand, caressing it gently. Don't think about him. Just take a deep breath in and exhale. Just take calm and think of something else that can calm your heart. She was speechless. His words were exactly what she had told her so earlier, and hearing them from him left her in disbelief. I'll sleep here with you. Huh? Just sleep. Nothing is going to happen. She couldn't say anything and just lay down, facing him. He also lay down beside her. At midnight, Jay opened his eyes and looked at her. She was lying beside him like a baby. He moved closer, but didn't touch her. He spoke in a low tone. I don't know how you felt, but I wanted to break his legs and hands too for touching you, but I couldn't because you might have get uncomfortable or embarrassed if I made a scene there. I'm sorry, Juan. He had no idea how hard the sight broke me and bore him when I saw you accidentally. As he was touching you there, I just can't even bear to see my wife feel discomfort. I want you to always be safe with me. If you like me that much, then why are you maintaining such a distance between us, dear? When she opened her mouth and spoke suddenly, he panicked but responded after taking a few seconds. It was a forced marriage for me, one. I didn't even see your face before the marriage, and I didn't agree to it. Because I sacrificed a lot for my company, I wanted to get married only after sitting down in love. But my parents didn't even listen to me. But if you had told me this at least after marriage, I wouldn't have worried. I thought you hated me, or didn't like me. I thought I was ugly, or you might have already someone in your life. He placed his index finger on her lips, making her stop. First, I didn't hate you, but I was angry. 
so i distanced myself to make sure i didn't show my anger on you by mistake second you aren't ugly to me you are the most beautiful girl in the world and third there is no one in my life except you i just needed some time to prepare myself to accept everything that's all and i'm really really sorry for taking this much time she smiled but stopped before he could notice it Why did you tell the maid that I shouldn't cook for you too? I wanted you not to take stress yourself for me. And it doesn't mean I don't like your cooking. It just means I want you to have a good time instead of spending all time in the kitchen. I thought you wouldn't care for me when you agreed for me to continue my job. I wanted to let you do whatever you want. You are my slave here, but my wife who can do whatever she wants. She smiled at him and it made his nervous disappear into a thin air. Thank God, so you forgive me, right? Not yet. There are still many tasks you need to complete to deserve my forgiveness, Mr. T. What is it? You should do many things. You need to take me wherever I ask and spend time with me from now on and... Oh my God, what is all that? There are so many tasks. I'll tell you one by one. And if you do the math, then I'll find it. Otherwise, otherwise simple. You will sleep in your room again. No, no, I'll do whatever you ask from the second. Really? Of course, anything for you. Hmm. I think you don't believe me yet. So I'll show you my sincere too. Before she could say no, she already believed in him. He started packing her cheek, making her surprised. You believe me now, right? She couldn't respond as she was still in shock. I think I should put in some effort to make you believe me. He began kissing her face, making her laugh and brush her. Hey, I believe you stop it. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Now just sleep and stop kissing my face all night. Okay, let's cut it then. He spread his arms and then she moved closer to him. They cut with her leaning into his touch. Then he whispered. I promise you, I'll take care of you well. I already know that. He looked at her with affection and she smiled before pecking his lips.